Hello everyone, welcome back to my Twitch live streaming of KSB's Hard Career Mode. What you're about to see was recorded on June 20th and has been edited for YouTube. Please follow me on Twitch to get notified when I'm streaming, I'm Tyler Race there as well. Much of what I stream will not be posted on YouTube. My current streaming times are Saturday and Sunday at 11am Pacific Time, 6pm GMT, and also on Wednesdays at 4pm Pacific, 11pm GMT. Now on to my commentary from June 20th. Okay, hello everyone. And we're just going to continue career mode here, so we've got quite a mission underway. We've got a lot of funds at stake in it. So let's go. I'll wait till everybody sees our grand launcher and mission in space. There we go. Kerberi, Liadolin, and Stelsi are our tourists. And they have to rendezvous with the other portion of their mission but uh, yeah I think we're uh, good to go here they don't have much electric charge though gotta be careful with that alright so I'm gonna bring the launcher down first okay mission is underway I think it'll have to be the other portion that rendezvous with this let me see well, we've got RCS at least. Not a whole lot. It's gonna guzzle it like crazy with those eight ports like that. Okay. But uh, while it is heading out, we are going to bring this back and hopefully safely. So that's first. If we recall, uh, we barely managed to get this up last time though we seem to have a fair amount of fuel hey Mitko so yes it worked out uh, Mitko's SRBs and all <laughs> where are we going we are going to be going to jewel with the tourists and so we've got a huge jewel mission with three tourists uh, lots of stops and all but first of all I need to bring the launcher back down because it's a reusable launcher I keep forgetting the right numbers for this launcher. Uh, I think we ended up short, didn't we? Let me try and boost it higher than this. Were, were we short or long? Uh, it's been a few days and I've done a few things in between. I've actually been doing a lot of trying to recover launchers. So... It's pretty darn random. At least uh, when you're not using mods like trajectories and all. I haven't really tried trajectories much yet. Just a reminder, in this install we've got two things. We've got ambient light adjustment and Kerbal Engineer Redux. Yeah, so just to recap, our tourists want a lot of stuff. Suborbital spaceflight on BOP, suborbital space, spaceflight on VAL, Orbit around Leif, land on Bob, so we're all on Jewel. Probably we'll have to wait on that one. Fly by Val, fly by Jewel, orbit around Jewel, orbit around Leif. I think we can do all except for suborbital spaceflight around Jewel this time around. Suborbital spaceflight around Jewel, maybe. It depends, because we have to bring the Jewel orbit in quite a ways to do that. I don't know if we'll, because we're going to be arrow breaking at Leif, it's going to be interesting to see whether we can do suborbital around Jewel without expending a whole lot of Delta V. Let me aim for 32 kilometers here. I still forgot to put in a Probodobodyne Hex in this launcher. Okay, once we get this around, we'll, uh... Oh, we're at a very low altitude, though. Well, then higher would be better anyway. Probably even higher than 32 kilometers would be good. Where are we? Yeah, we're still a ways away. I think maybe 35 would be better. Sorry for, uh... For being finicky about this, but I want to try and get it back. I mean, probably it'll survive anyway, but it's a hefty thing. This one can do water landings, that's true. Uh, what it can't do is uh, land on those mountains, so that's a thing I have to watch out for. 
right. The launcher, uh, without the fuel, the launcher is 120,000. With the fuel, it's more than that, obviously. It's uh, got four main sails at the bottom. Many orange tanks involved. Uh, I think uh, altogether eight orange tanks. Can launch about 30 tons to orbit. Uh, though we haven't really hit the limit of it yet. We added boosters last time and it was able to launch like more than 40 tons. Okay, here's where SAS wants to keep rotating it, so let me uh, cut SAS out and try and stop that. We're probably a little bit low this time as well. We may hit land, but uh, we're probably still low. Deviating to the left now. I don't like to see this. Okay, I'm gonna put the RCS on to use the burners. Oh, does this not have the burners on either? I think I forgot to put the burners on this one. Crud. This one might have a little bit of tough time not tipping over if it doesn't have the burners. Why is it so far off from retrograde? It's got a lot of aerodynamic surfaces on it. It should just be pushed to retrograde. Let me just leave it alone for a bit. Maybe it'll work out. This wasn't the dramatic piece I was looking for. Okay, there we go. It's still not totally accurate, but I used the landing prediction to adjust the trajectory on the way down. Yeah, I, I've done that a few times before too. Wow, those fins. We, we're getting a fin ablation. That's nominal. Okay, I think all of the fins have ablated. <laughs> May put those on after landing and before continuing the mission because you think it's not the first time I've discovered they were missing. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, it's it's in the subassembly. Yeah, the subassembly doesn't have them, so I guess I should uh, pop in the VAB to slap them on. Yeah. May just short of land? Let's see. Okay, initial parachute deployments. We might as well toss out the air brakes this time. Second wave of parachute deployments is good. Gear down. Unflippable Mark II. Well, I think uh, the we, we could just call it unflippable. Uh, you know what Mark II would be if we like added an extra engine at the bottom. Uh, you know, on these on these ones maybe we could add like uh, extra engine instead of. I don't know that probably or uh, yeah. Let, let let's just call it the unflippable because it's not a big difference. It those. Those changes should have been done already anyway. Have I tried coming down steep and hard? I think we had a steep uh, steep descent, but not hard. I always run the engines. Oh, do you mean steep uh, slope or steep trajectory? We've done steep slope, not steep trajectory. I never do steep trajectory. Okay, it doesn't have the Verners. I better recover quickly. 
It looks like it's going to start tipping at any moment. Okay, so that's successful. Back to uh, calmer... Calmer tones. No, that's a little bit... There we go. Okay, so uh, parts. 108,000 only. Huh. Less than I thought. Okay, uh, but uh, let's make the changes. Oh, probably if we slap on the Verners and all, it would be better off. It will be more expensive anyway. Open up. And that looks like the probe core. So an extra reaction wheel underneath there. And we will put on the hex. And only six batteries on the hex. Okay. And finally the Verners. Okay, that should do it. So now this is a subassembly and we'll just call it the same thing we've always called it. So unflippable LV. Yep, overwrite that. Okay, now with extra parts. Uh, not as m oh, you're right, the two batteries we lost. Alright. Uh, yeah, don't save this thing. On with the mission. Oh, if you drop it onto the original, it'll ask if you want to overwrite. Okay, excellent. I should do that. Didn't know that. Okay, so that's the other part of our mission. We probably need to go around one more time before rendezvousing. Mods, just uh, Kerbal Engineer Redux and Ambient Light Adjustment. Uh, honestly, it was because I was watching other streams and Das at one point insisted that uh, even if we're playing stock, we should use Ambient Light Adjustment. And I forget who it was that uh, highly recommended uh, Kerbal Engineer at all costs, but I was actually watching other people's. So uh, I went, eh, okay, fine. I'm like that. Uh, I, I tend... Uh, I might not take your suggestion right away, but eventually I will. If you give me suggestions. And of course, they, they, it wasn't directed personally to me, but, uh, you know, I do listen, so. Oh, and toolbar. Well, toolbar is necessary for ambient light adjustment. It's not, uh, it's not a thing that uh, was intended to be standalone in any way. And you know, it's a good point. I mean, light adjustment is just helping the viewer, and also Kerbal Engineer is uh, saving us time. I'm, I mean, of course, I could pull out the calculator and voila, get the numbers I need, but that's just tedious for, for those watching, and I don't want anything about this to be overly tedious for you guys. So just a minor burn, 16.3. Uh, really, the Poodle engine was not necessary. I shouldn't have brought the Poodle. I should have brought, like, the LV-909. But then again, this payload would have wobbled even more if I had the LV-909 at the bottom. Yeah, but I don't want to add too many mods. I know Precise Node could speed up the node tweaking, but... Uh, I was thinking about that while I said that. It's, it wouldn't speed it up too much. You know what Precise Node does? Precise Node makes me want even better rendezvous. It'd take the same amount of time. It's just that I'd uh, increase my standards. So. Alright, well. 1.4 is alright. And they have no actual Kerbal Pilot with them. It's all automated. It's an automated tour. Is this the same ship as the one I launched empty? No, this is the fueled one. This is fuel plus plus Kerbals. Uh, the empty one is the one we're docking with. Unfortunately, we're not going to be, be delivering a full load of fuel to the target. Is this the first big time rendezvous we've done in this? We've already used 320 units of liquid fuel in this. That was 320 units we were supposed to deliver to the mission. May mod propellant will suffice for the rest of this. 
with all these geo missions, I really need a fuel depot in orbit. Fuel depot would make sense um, if we had uh, the ISRU stuff. Yeah. Okay. We need we need thrust. This is taking too much. Yeah. I I want to build a fuel depot alongside the ISRU system, but maybe we should do it earlier. Okay, and of course we can uh, turn this around. Oh, don't even need to, it's already lined up. Ship looks good. Uh, it's a pretty good looking mission altogether. The whole problem with it was the way it wobbled on the way up. I'm taking the docking slow and easy, as I always do. I think the music works out quite nicely. First time trying this out during docking. Ah, that took too long to dock. It switched songs. I'm gonna have to get my docking time within the length of that uh, that piece. Okay, SAS off. Let's try that. Let's try RCS off as well. There we go. Okay, this is gonna be bad. Uh, yeah, I've got a lot of fuel to transfer, but let's transfer to Kerbals first. So, yep, transfer. You guys are all going over here. Okay, so no more crew over here. Now, the grand resource transfer of 2015. <laughs> yeah, attack fuel balance, it would be nice too, yes. I know, this has got to be tedious as all heck. I have to be very careful when pressing ALT not to accidentally press spacebar. That would be bad. And we know I can't quick save. So, lock the stages ALT L. Um, okay, done. So now the super tedious part because part uh, we, we we're short part of our tanks, but I want to fill up the transfer stage to the brim. Come on. I could have probably multiple click things and made it easier on myself. Alt L is the most useful thing ever with multi launch ships. Well, my very first time using it right here on stream. <laughs> oh dear, this music is simply reminding me about how long it is taking. Next. There is certain music that uh, evokes a clock, and that was that was one of those. So, any thoughts? I don't know if you guys have watched the video I did of my draft Mars mission and the SLS stuff, uh, and Falcon Heavy, not to forget Falcon Heavy. I don't know if you guys have watched that video, but any thoughts? Only watch some of it? Okay, one vote for it's too long. <laughs> well, same as Mikey? Uh-oh. Okay, well, I was afraid of that. I tried some clever editing. Uh, the original video length was uh, seven hours long. <laughs> the, the, recorded, the recorded video of the mission was seven hours long, and that was already cutting out the transfers. Um, so while the engine was burning, I still stopped recording, but... Yeah. It was a long deal. You quite liked it? I had nothing else to do then. Wish colonization would be longer. Well, colonization takes forever. It's just that I can't put all that in because uh, it crashes like three times during the mission. So every video, the colonization series, it crashes like three times. It takes me like three, four hours to record one of those. 
usually have to record it in two separate times. So uh, you might occasionally hear that I sound quite different halfway through the video. That's because I'm recording it like many hours later. You want more uh, t Today in Space his History episodes? Yeah. Uh, I haven't gotten to that in a little bit. Actually, the Mars thing took up the time I'd normally take for that. So it was actually the Mars thing getting in the way of that. Interesting ships, too bad it didn't work. Spoilers! No. <laughs> yeah, I know. But that's why I, I, I said at the outset that probably wasn't going to... Well, I intended not to work because I wasn't landing everything at the same place. Okay, I'll do fuel balancing on the other side separately. I think we're all full up now. I don't think we have any capacity for a mop propellant that isn't already full on this side. Right? Yeah. Okay. I think we're ready to undock now then. Okay. RCS back away. A future Tish. Uh, today in space future. <laughs> I already have a future series that I'm not doing. Uh, I've got looking forward. Well, I don't do alternative history if that's what you've got there, Mitko. I'm uh, I'm an I, I'm a historian. I actually don't like alternative histories. Uh, it's it's a pet peeve of mine. Mars stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, the Mars stuff. Once I get the hardware right, there will be interesting stories to come from that. It's just that I need to get the hardware right. We have something that's not full, but I think that... Oh, yeah, these, some of these tanks aren't full. But that's probably because uh, we used that fuel on the way up. Is it relatively balanced? Yeah, I think it's relatively balanced around the axis. Should be fine. Okay, let's plot for Jewel. Not professional. Uh... I am, uh, I, it's just that that was my major and what I studied and what for much of my lifetime I wanted to teach. But uh, I, my specialty is US history and uh, specifically of the 1960s. Though I have some interest in other things, I'm not very narrowly focused. We should be able to hit uh, Jewel right exactly... Yeah, there we go. Very low periapsis should be possible. But we want to hit Lathe, remember. We're error breaking at Lathe is the goal here. Oh, this should be a breeze. This is an excellent transfer time. Okay, I'll, I'll fill around with it on the actual burn. Yep, going to Jewel, we've got three tourists. Three tourists on an automated vehicle. And uh, they want to do all sorts of stuff around Jewel. They want to... Uh, one of them wants to land on Bop. We'll have to make sure the correct one lands on Bop. Uh, it'll be pretty sad if we left the... Well, not left, but uh, set the wrong one down on Bop. Okay, I'm going to unlock staging now. And activate that engine as well. Yeah, uh, so we're air braking around Leif. Let me just go through the... Do I have my little order of operations card? I wrote it all down here somewhere. Ah, there we go. So uh, we need a Jewel flyby. We need to orbit Leif by air braking at Leif. We orbit Jewel. That'll be after we exit Leif. Uh, we transfer to Val. We go suborbital around Val. We transfer to Bop and we land on Bop. That is our order of operations. First dual mission with just tourists. Uh, we sent probes. 
That's enough, right? No, we 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 sent we. It's not our first dual mission. We sent uh, we sent cur we sent other Kerbals. We've we've rescued a Kerbal around Lathe. Yeah, we rescued. Uh, I, I'm looking because this this portion seems like it's getting ready to hit us. Um, no, it's it's going further away. Okay, yeah, we rescued a Kerbal around Lathe. We left the Kerbal there. <laughs> we put a Kerbal around Lathe, and we had to rescue that Kerbal. Okay, continuing. Just a little bit nervous about the position of that mission. That's now a rescue capsule that could uh, help out a stranded somebody or another. Okay, let's try it. Oh, maybe we'll go around. Well, no, I think we'll be alright. Let's go. Seven and a half minute burn, though. Once I get stabilized, I'll do physical time warp. Now, there is partial expectation that we might have to rescue these tourists as well. I mean, let's face it. Uh, we've got quite a complicated mission here. Lots of steps. And how much Delta V we need for all of it? Not 100% clear. Our transfer requirement at least doesn't look too bad. You've never done a dual mission before, so you're learning. Don't mess it up. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> I make no guarantees. This is not a tutorial. This is my first ever tourist mission, so I'm sort of, I'm sort of unsure about this whole thing myself. Not my first dual mission, but these tourists, I don't know. They're a wild bunch. Even if you learn what not to do, it'll still be good. Well, that's the spirit. Okay, how far are we away from our... Wow, oh dear. We're not hitting this one, right? Ugh, crud. Okay, so. First thing you don't want to do is you don't want to leave with that big a gap between your intended trajectory and your actual trajectory. That's not generally a good idea. Better to uh, do part of the burn first and then go around Kerbin and then continue with the rest of it. Uh, obviously, you don't want to actually re reach escape before uh, shutting off your first burn. So, you want to burn like 900 meters per second and then finish off the rest of the burn on the next go around. Or less. I mean, you could do like 600 first because then your transfer won't be too different. You'll still need to replot it, though. I also don't have any real... Do I have even RCS ports on this thing? I don't think so. That's funny, I'm carrying Mop Bell in the capsule, but no RCS ports there. That sucks. Okay, we've got a minimum there. Alright, I need to replot to get closer. And probably should get closer. Probably it'll take me more than a minute to replot that. While it's allowing me to have maneuver nodes, I better take the opportunity. Oh, wait, no, that's a Val encounter. Don't do that. Come on. Okay, leaf encounter. That'll do well. I don't know why I'm trying to plot it out now, because once we cross Kerbin SOI, it's gonna be like uh, totally messing this up. But we'll try and retain it. So that is our mid course adjustment after a year and 411 days Kerbin time. Alright, let's head out with this. Alright, continuing on to Jewel. Well, to that maneuver anyway. Uh, let me orient a little bit better out here in interplanetary space. Let's go north-south with it. How do you switch back to the craft in Matthew? Yeah, backspace. 
How many Kerbals have died in the name of science thus far? One. Jeb. <laughs> uh, Jeb died uh, because of the... Uh, his pod flipped around because his pod was on top of a science junior and then the heat shield and uh, for some reason this was back in 1.0 I think uh, he probably would have survived in 1.0.2 but in 1.0 he uh, his pod flipped around and he overheated yeah in uh, 1.0.2 I don't think he, he would have overheated his pod might still have flipped around but he probably wouldn't have overheated like that he was pretty low in the atmosphere at that point, but in 1.0, the, the the heat effects were pretty severe. Yep. So yeah, Jeb is the only one we've lost so far. Yeah, uh, I don't know if it's true in normal career mode, but in hard career mode, it's permadeath for the Kerbals. Okay, here we go. Still oriented north-south, and I should still look at map view to see that we're getting this right. Okay, time for the burn. Okay, well let me... Well, we'll just go into the dual system and see how it shapes up. Yeah. Okay. To Jewel SOI we go. Okay, here we are. Well, let me make a plot. Yes, wait, yes, sort of. Come on, give me that little bubble. Ah, oh, come on. Maneuver node, please. Please. Oh, somewhere around there. I'll take that. Okay. Okay, music has gotten a little bit peppier. That's good. Okay, that's a pretty good approach altitude for Lathe, though I'd like to correct that uh, inclination issue. But it's probably not going to let me, so let's not worry about that right now. Okay. I think we can probably do this burn earlier than I've got it there. That's in five days, but it'll probably be cheaper if I do it now. So let me do it. Why Lathe Aerobrake instead of Jewel Aerobrake? Because uh, one of the contracts says Orbit Lathe. So uh, it's just easier that way. Otherwise, we'd, we'd have, I mean, we're gonna have to Aerobrake at Lathe anyway, because uh, we've got this Orbit Lathe part of the contract. And of course, once we get into Lathe Orbit, all we have to do is break Lathe Orbit in order to get into Jewel Orbit, so... We want a light... Lathe Orbit. But yeah, we don't have to fly by it. We have to get into orbit around it. If we just had to fly by Lathe, then that'd be easy. But, uh, who wants to orbit Lathe? Uh, the Stelsi wants to orbit Lathe, so... I saw a lathe encounter back there. And that saved me some trouble. Oh, okay, there we go. Okay, well, I'll fine tune it once we get closer. Because I think any more probably will res. Whoa. Uh, let's pass on that one. Uh, that's not bad. That's not bad. Okay, that'll do. No, I also wanted to see my resulting orbit around Jewel just to get a better sense. Uh, use Lafe to get in the plane with Bob. Now, because uh, we have to transfer to Val as well. We have a transfer to Val and suborbital on Val first. We've got a few steps here. I've got a little index card with all of the steps, so it's not like I. I can remember them all either. Ooh, squiggly line trajectories. Ah. Oh, I hope my plot is correct. Just flat me out. I don't want a high inclination around Lathe. Wait. 
We remember what happened with the high inclination around Leif. That's how we stranded Sidri. Remind me, guys. 36 sound all right? Or is that too high? I'm going to go in at 36, but give me feedback. Uh, I don't... Remembering these uh, air braking altitudes is tough. I think 36 is probably high. You keep forgetting to, yeah. Hey, there's, there's our other stuff. The multi-purpose rescue, the jewel quote-unquote station, which is what Sidri actually started out on. So we have some experience around Leith. Unfortunately, that doesn't tell us the air-breaking altitude. Both of those missions had bits break off during air-breaking. Bear... Better a bit high since I only need to be captured. You say only need to be captured, but um, we've been captured many times before. Okay, so here we are. It's only a time, tiny bit of fuel there, and we have a heat shield at the bottom of this. Well, I'm retracting the solar panels now, I think. Did I action group the solar panels? Please tell me I action group the solar panels. I did. Yeah, I did. So I'm. I, I can transfer the remaining fuel. Yeah, I should transfer the remaining fuel up and then ditch that. Let's see, a tank that doesn't have any. Yep. I should have done that earlier anyway. Once I finish the transfer, I should have just transferred the remaining fuel in here up. I'm sure it's all drained out now. Okay. Double checking. Yeah. All right. Off it goes. Come on. Uh, or did we... Yeah, we have a heat shield. Okay. And a decoupler there. Okay. Alright, hopefully that will work out right. Uh, what is our altitude now after decoupling? You know, that changes things. We're going pretty fast. Yeah, the, the atmospheric height is 50 kilometers. That's correct. That's as high as the atmosphere gets. This is risky stuff. I uh, wish I could check the previous episode, but I haven't crunched it up yet, and the uh, raw files, unfortunately, aren't viewable in VLC. They're only viewable in my... For some reason, VLC always chokes on the files from the streams. Don't ask me why. Otherwise, I'd definitely watch it to find out. Oh, I haven't ignited. Oh, I can't ignite the engine. Right. Okay, well, it doesn't matter. We are uh, on a course for 36. Yeah, I can't light the engine because we've got the heat shield on it. <laughs> All we can do is RCS and we don't have much RCS fuel. So, this is what we're doing. 